So in our day and age, America is heading more toward a socialist system and a sexual system. There is no doubt about that. We're heading more and more toward over there. You just look at the, these Democrats going off at the race. Biden, Sanders, Warren, all those guys. I mean, this is like really hitting it. So they're like really shooting it out over there. And the more that you look at them, brethren, the more demonic you see them. You look at their speeches, look at their proclamations, you, re you realize, man, how come our world is hitting toward this mess? I don't get it. How can we hit, hit up to this mess? This is so bad. As a matter of fact, here are some interesting things that did happen. This is how demonic our world has become. So to explain the demonism that's spreading about throughout our world, <laughs> this is uh, from, if you go on his Facebook account, this is by Daniel S Sprague. So Daniel Sprague in his Facebook account, if you don't believe me. So you can go to his Facebook account right now and then look at Daniel Sprague. Now, he was wearing a red hat, and with this red hat, one of the people mistook that as one of those uh, Trump hats. So this is what he said, quote, I was outside with my friends when some grabbed me from behind, spun me around, and punched me in the face. You know how old he was? 50. What? What a punk this person is. You know what he said? Quote, a misguided soul, possibly not alone, who I'm assuming was not very literate, spun me around, punched me in the face, and grabbing my hat while she was yelling, how dare you, leading me to think she thought it was a make America great again hat, which it actually wasn't. The hat actually read make 50 great again. That's what it was. <laughs> So, see, you know, these people are demon-possessed, man. You know why? They want to push their agenda, their leftist agenda. You want to hear something more? All right. The first Netflix film by, guess by who? Obama. First film produced by the Obamas. And guess what it was? So it won an award on Sunday during the Oscars. Of course it did, right? The, it is American Factory. Now you notice this socialist flavor, you can tell where it's going. It's going like a little bit of communist manifesto a little bit. But did it? Yeah, it did. Julia Reinkert from American Factory, you know what she said? She received the award and she stated this. This is actually recited by Karl Marx, Communist Manifesto. Working people have it harder and harder these days and we believe that things will get better when workers of the world unite. That is actually from Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. Oh, we're not communist and ah, aha, aha. All right, Barack Obama, you can look at his tweet. He says this in his tweet. Congrats to Julia and Stephen, the filmmakers behind American Factory, for telling such a complex, moving story about the very human consequences of wrenching economic change Glad to see two talented and downright good people take home the Oscar for Higher Ground's first release. American Factory tells an emotional uh, local story that resonates globally. Director Steven Bognar and Julia Reichert have created a masterwork that examines culture, labor, and class struggle and challenges us to consider what unites us instead of what separates us. See, this is this socialist flavor. This is the socialist flavor you can see. But it's so disguised with human sympathy and empathy that you can't tell. Yeah. Satan blinds you by using positive, nice emotions yeah. from seeing the darker picture behind it. Now, if you doubt me even further, this is by the Jerusalem Post, January 18, 2020. 
Bernie Sanders, you, you know what he backed up? You wouldn't guess who, who he backed up. Who did he back up, Pastor? Who did he back up? <laughs> well, Bernie Sanders, because this guy is so left field out of there, he is so off the right path because he's so left field that he misses it every time. <laughs> the title of the article is Bernie Sanders backed a party that supported Iran during hostage crisis. So that's the title of the article by the Jerusalem Post. Quote, in April 1979, Ayatollah Ruhoya, this is probably with the Y sound with double L, excuse me, Khomeini took over Iran. Months later, 52 American diplomats and citizens, as well as citizens of other nations, were kidnapped and held hostage for 444 days in the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. While a majority of America, yeah, look, look up her name. Look up her name. See, people have been, haven't been reading. They've been just looking at what mainstream news, like trustworthy CNN, trustworthy MSNBC says. They don't tell you all the details. While a majority of Americans stood firmly for the hostages and against their kidnappers, the Socialist Workers Party, that's SWP, a self-proclaimed Trotsk, uh, Trotskyist, so Trotsky, you know, Trotsky is a famous one of those people, part of the Socialist Club. Trotskyist Revolutionary Party took the opposite position and insisted that the hostages were CIA agents. Wow. <laughs> In 1977, presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, trust these left wingers, you know, <laughs> left the tiny left wing Liberty Union Party of Vermont that he co founded and began to align himself with the WHO. That group, SWP. With the SWP in 1980, serving as their presidential elector in Vermont, advocating for the party's candidates who ran on a platform that defended Iran's keeping the hostages. How about that? On May 21st, 1981, Sanders spoke at a pulley rally saying, quote, for the last 40 years, the Socialist Workers Party has been harassed, informed upon, had their offices broken into, had members of their party fired from their jobs, and have been treated with cold contempt by the United States government. What, 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 about, what about our side? They, they're not going to mention our side too, what we went through. No, they don't do that. So you notice how much socialist it's going and how much sexual it's going. So as you know, the Super Bowl halftime show... It was, it was very modestly dressed, let's say. Shakira and J-Lo doing their dance. Their dance. But, <laughs> but, I mean, they were doing so much provocative moves. You know, they were shaking their hips for like a couple seconds long, let's say. And they, they, she, J, J, uh, Jennifer Lopez was doing this pole strip climbing like a stripper, dancing, scantily dressed. And you know what's worse? There were kids participating in that. Yeah. Kids participating in that. Now you call that. Now we got to realize this is that we lived in a day and age that this is normal now. This is normal now. Look at the NFL. You don't believe me? Look at the NFL official YouTube video. Okay. You know what's the number one popular video? Shakira and J Lo showing off their sexual bodies in that halftime show. That's the number one hit. In fact, if you look at the second biggest hit, the second biggest hit, the Super Bowl halftime show recently from Shakira and Lopez, that hit, that almost doubled, that almost doubled the second most popular video on the NFL official YouTube channel. Don't believe me? Look at it right now. Last time I saw it was that way. Maybe changed, but I doubt it. I bet you it got bigger now because it's still fresh and new. Now, you know what these hypocrites were doing? They were, they were parading about feminism and, these, and feminists have the audacity to think, why do men objectify women's body? Well, hey, you hypocrite, you're objectifying it to the whole world. How can we not objectify when you're shaking it like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? How can we not objectify? Yeah. Yeah. What, look at Matthew 7. Look what Jesus says, Matthew chapter 7. Ridiculous people, man. Look at how stinking hypocritical our world is getting into, man. 
All right, Matthew chapter 5, excuse me. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 5. Now look at verse 28. Uh, verse 27 through 28. Verses 27 through 28. You know what God calls that? God calls what they did fornication. Oh, no, there wasn't anything sexual going on. You don't, no, God thinks it's sexual. God calls it fornication. You don't believe me? Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Right? Well, they didn't commit adultery. Verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed what? Adultery. Not just the guy looking with who? With her already in his heart. See that? You know what they did? Fornication in front of the whole world. You have a clean conscience about that with over 150 something million views? That's fornicating with over 150 people out there. Oh, you're, you're exaggerating. You're over dramatic. You're sensationalist. No, I'm reading you Bible, man. Yeah. I'm reading you Bible. Don't get mad at me. I'm reading you Bible right there. Right. Look at Revelation 18 and then Revelation 6. Revelation 18. In Revelation 6, we're going to close it off here. I would like to close it with a few, quote, uh, few quotes over here. And these are disturbing quotes. Here's the first quote. June 9th, 1966, the Pittsburgh Press. They quoted Earl Browder. He's the former chairman of the American Communist Party. You know what he said about America? America is getting socialism on the installment plan through the programs of the welfare state. There is more real socialism in the United States today than there is in the Soviet Union. You know what he when This was 1966, we're crying out loud. It's gotten more, the government has gotten more centralized than that. Wow, crazy, isn't it? Crazy? All right. This is documented by Jerry Klein, Pittsburgh Press, June 9th, 1966, Section 1, page 11. Title of the article is Earl Browder, twice candidate for president, now lives quietly. Okay. Here are the other two quotes which I read earlier, but I will read them again because it bears reference to this teaching. Quote, in June 1957, Nikita Khrushchev, Soviet Communist Party boss was interviewed before a nationwide American television audience. With calm assurance, he stated, I can prophesy that your grandchildren in America will live under socialism. And please do not be afraid of that. See, they mask it with human empathy that you hear on the news, see? That's why people aren't afraid of that. Your grandchildren will not understand how their grandparents did not understand the progressive nature of a socialist society. This is a Communist Party, party boss, Nikita Khrushchev. Okay? This is documented by J. Edgar Hoover himself. You got to realize. Founder of the Bureau. His book, Masters of Deceit, 1958, page 3. Last quote, and then we'll look at the two verses. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. Norman Thomas, leader of the Socialist Party in the United States, he quoted this. The American people will never knowingly adopt socialism, but under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program. Until one day America will be a socialist nation without knowing how it happened. That's fulfilled at Revelation, I said 6, but we'll skip that. We'll look at 13. 13 is better. Revelation 13. By an old man, by an old Bible scholar, he said this during the early 60s about America. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. The old man, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, mentioned about the Antichrist beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. That's the United States of America. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. That's Russia. Notice feet of a bear. It is not the bear itself. It is United States itself, cloaked as democracy and freedom. Right, come on. The body of a leper, United States. But it's moving like what? Socialism. 
Russia. See that? How about that? Oh, Russia is not communist anymore, Pastor. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You read current events, man? All right. I know officially it's not known as communism, but good night, nurse. Look at the government workings. That ain't democracy like United States. That's very close to socialism. That's going to happen. This is the Antichrist purpose, folks, is to bring this socialist program and its sexuality as well. And it's interesting if sexuality that's mentioned within the Antichrist kingdom, you know what it's connected to? Catholic. Guess who are the two hip dancers in their modest dressing apparel they were, their upbringing was? Catholic. And their performers. Didn't you know the Bible predicted that? Revelation 18? Revelation 18. Verse 2 we see is Babylon, right? Which we know is a Roman Catholic church. Now look at verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 150 clicks of fornication. That's scriptural, Matthew 5. And, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Yeah, Matthew 5. Adultery with her, right? And we know that's spiritual fornication too. So that matches up to a T. Let's keep reading. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. That's right. NFL getting rich out of that. Through what? Spiritual fornication. But look at this. Did you read this one? Read verse uh, 22. And the voice, this is talking about Babylon. The voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be no more, uh, shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. God judge Babylon for its music industry as well. Wow. That's Catholic. See? Yeah. To a T, the Bible prophesied. We're getting there. We're getting there. Get ready, man, because it's going to get more socialist. It's going to get more sexual. And the Catholic Church is going to be more tolerant, especially with their new pope. You notice how much more tolerant they're doing? It's going to get more tolerant and more tolerant, more tolerant. Why? You have to have a one world government, one world church religion, new world order. You have to have that. 